Welcome to Backpage Blues. I'm joined by Charlie the Hurricane Skillen from the Mail Online. How are you, mate? I'm, okay. very, I'm absolutely brilliant. We are in buoyant mood here at the Chelsea Fans Channel. Usually, obviously, we deal with Chelsea-related stuff. But we're always buoyant. We're always buoyant, but we are in exceptionally good mood. The witch is dead. <laughs> Set Blatter has gone. I, I couldn't be happier with this. I think that it's long overdue, and I'm absolutely delighted with this news. What, what are you hearing in your office? I mean, I can't lie to you. It's been an absolute mental week and a half of this uh, this FIFA stuff. It, it's great news for football. I think ev everyone's everyone's delighted. It's a real kind of shock move because everyone thought you would have kind of vice-like grip on FIFA. To be honest, I think he's done the honourable thing. Honourable, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. I will not listen to the word honourable mentioned in that man's in in the same context no, as no, that man's no. name. I mean, that, that, that's he is an, a, a complete troll, a, <laughs> a disgrace, and a despicable man. And I hope that he's arrested. I hope that the next stage of this is that he's in cuffs because I think that he is a vile character, odious horror of a man. Well, look, Sep. If your day wasn't bad enough already, now Raw's slagging you off. It's so. a disgrace though, Charlie. It, yeah, is, no. it is a genuine disgrace. The way that he has, he's run football and taken bung after bung after yeah. bung. I remember when England went to Trinidad to play that friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all, uh, all revolving around England getting a vote from Jack yep. Warner yep. For, the, yep. for the World Cup to be here. Yep. Lo and behold, the World Cup goes to Qatar. It's, it's a disgrace and I, am, I couldn't be happy. I'm going to go and have a Guinness after this because that's how happy <laughs> I am. Then we always go and have a Guinness We always do, yeah. that, but yeah. I'm going to have two. Oh, bloody hell. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's great news football. I think most people are happy about it, quite, quite rightly. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a seismic change in, in world football. Can't wait to see what, uh, what yeah, transpires. It's exciting, it's exciting. And let's, let's get the game back to the people, people like me and you, who, who it's, it's our game. It's got nothing to do with that bald idiot. So, uh, yeah, this is, this, is the first, this is the first step of a new dawn. And uh, I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> back to Chelsea-related matters. I'm yes. going to bring the tone down now. I'm going to, uh, as, as happy as I was, I'm now... Troubled. Why are you troubled? Because I'm word on the street is that Diego Costa may be homesick and heading back to Madrid. Okay. Say it ain't so. <laughs> it ain't so. Um, right, well, this is a report that came out um, at the start of the week. It was on the front page of Marca, which is a Madrid uh, daily. And um, basically said that Costa's homesick, he's unsettled in London, and he wants to return to Atletico Madrid. Oh. Now, it is true that Costa misses Madrid. He doesn't speak English particularly well, as, as you know, anyone that's seen his interview <laughs> will know. Um, but he, I'm not sure you're going to miss Madrid enough to go back to Atletico Madrid wages. Simply missing, simply missing a place is irrelevant. I, yeah, went, to, yeah, I went to Liverpool University and I miss that. I, I grew, yeah. grew up in the same house as my mum and I miss living with her. Yeah. But I'm not going back there. I'm not going to go back and live in Liverpool. No, I'm not going to go no. back and live in my mum's house. It's no, no, exactly, exactly. You know, I think, I think it's a little bit stirring from uh, the Madrid media. Both of their teams um, haven't done so well of late, so yeah. it was. I think it's a little bit of cheerleading from them. And in fact, just after the um, uh, Sydney game, which obviously Chelsea won one 0 in, mm -hmm. in that friendly, um, both Mourinho and Costa himself said, "This is an absolute Slow nice down. story." You know, Costa's unbelievably happy here. I think you can see it when he plays, and everyone goes, "You know, Diego, Diego." He absolutely it? loves it. Diego, Diego. Very nice. That's wonderful. <laughs> I think that's a clever, clever Thanks. chant. Yeah, I know. Must have, must <laughs> have taken up with those that. ages yeah. to come up with <laughs> very complex lyrics. Um, and Mourinho said, you know, he's very upset about these stories coming out. He's 100% focused, I believe, on, on Chelsea next season. And I believe you. And that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what he said as well. So I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Superb. You mentioned the, the, the game in Sydney. Yeah. Good performance. I thought Hazard was Magnificent, I think well, it was, as, as usual. Yeah, saying the water is wet, but <laughs> or your Ruben, <laughs> Ruben Loftus Cheek, as coming for a bit of stick from Mourinho. Yeah, I mean, this was these were like amazing quotes after the game. We weren't expecting to get anything kind of this this volatile. It actually set Twitter off. You know, the Chelsea fans on Twitter mm. off on a, on a massive kind of frenzy. And I, I know I know the guys that um, watch this are big fans of Loftus Cheek. Mourinho has basically said that performance in that game was unacceptable. He said he's not going to tolerate it from his star players like Terry Hazard mm. or Nemanja Matic, so he's definitely not going to tolerate it from Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think it was his way of saying, yeah, so he started a couple of games, he's played well, everyone's talking about him, but hang on, you're only 19, you, you're not finished yet. Yeah. You know, he, he, he said, said um, Loftus-Cheek was complaining of back pain and then Mourinho said, well, he seemed to only have back pain when Sydney had the ball. Right. Um, so he, and he, he, also, he also likened him, he said that he looked at the performance of Mikel and Matic, yeah. I think, and yeah. just said, 
that that's the sort of performance I want from my central midfield players. Yeah, yeah, not of, of course. And you harsh. know, and, and yeah, it um, it's it's certainly strong. Whether it was particularly harsh, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have had a massive opinion on his performance watching that game. But then again, if you know, if, if Mourinho thinks that his commitment wasn't there then that's probably right. And, and I think it's important to rein these youth lads in. Yeah, they're, they're so brilliant. They're so brilliant. They, were on a, they were on a tour the other day. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they have fantastic support. They play at Stamford Bridge yeah, and, yeah. They get, and they pull in close to 10,000 fans. Yeah. Occasionally, we've seen, we've seen other very talented players yeah. it not quite work out for them, perhaps because of attitude and perhaps because yeah. of inflated ego. Uh, Arguably, Josh McKettron is an example of this. Yeah. He was on huge wages at yeah. a very young age. Still is. <laughs> and it's, it just hasn't materialised for yeah, him. I mean, so perhaps to, it's just that. It's, it's protecting be, Loftus-Cheek. Exactly. That, that's precisely what it is. It's not having a go at him. Everything Mourinho says or does is to get the best out of his players. This is exactly the same. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want anyone to read these quotes thinking, oh, now Mourinho hates Loftus-Cheek and Loftus-Cheek no, is no, going to no, be no, sold no, in the summer. No. It's to get the best out of him, uh, yeah. to remind him what he needs to do I think as a we're young all, player. I think, and I, th I, th I think that's absolutely right. I agree. And I think that all Chelsea fans, I imagine everybody watching this, is, is shrewd enough to observe Mourinho's brilliance here. This, yeah. is, this is a mind game, just another mind game for Mourinho absolutely. and a way of getting even more out of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Yeah, totally. So nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. In, in fact, it'll probably end up for the best. Uh, okay, excellent. Uh, I hear that Juan Cuadrado may have something to worry about. Any word on the street at the <laughs> Daily he, Mail street? What's I think going he's on? had something to worry about since January, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, we, we said a lot, of t we talked about him a lot because people want to know kind of what's going on with him, why, why he hasn't kind of hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, he hasn't looked like a Chelsea player. That is an absolute fact. Um, there's teams like uh, Napoli, Roma and Inter Milan. They're all desperate to bring him back to Serie A where he actually shone for Fiorentina <laughs> in the first half of the season and, and the, you know, and the season before. But... I'd like to see him get a chance at Chelsea, certainly till January, but it might be one of those where, you know, we've got to hold our hands up and say, I think that, we, is, you know, that is a case, this, I think. This, this was a bit of a mistake. He hasn't settled. He, he would clearly lack the physical. Would we lose money we, on him? You know, we would, I think, but we wouldn't lose that much. We paid, we paid 26 million from him. Chelsea would certainly be looking to get above 20. Um, I think there's a lesson here. I think that certain players have not quite ticked all the boxes in the Premier League but have yeah. shone in Syria. Exactly. Mohamed Salah look at Mo Salah. is a very, good example. Very similar situation in fact involving very much the same clubs mm. as well you know very slight player very fast couldn't really cut it in the Premier League mm. go Syria which you know is, is not of the quality as it was you know nearly when we were growing up no. um, oh, and, and he's shown sure. all of that stuff James Richardson Channel there 4 there you go you love it <laughs> um, so I think you know if if, if Mourinho wants to make three or four signings, I think, to strengthen the team, whether that's an absolutely world-class signing or whether it's general squad signings, uh, we've kind of talked about before, but he's definitely going to gonna sell some players, and I think if, if someone comes in for a decent bid with, uh, for Juan Cadrado, I think you know, that's something everyone's going to have to look at and might be best for all parties. Sad. It is sad. It's just disappointing, isn't it? I mean, mm. I, rem I remember you know, talking over his kind of potential with you when we were... Yeah, I did when as we well, when you good, good how well he did at Columbia. Yeah, well, yeah. Exa exactly. In exactly. the freezing cold in yeah, December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, now yeah, we're just okay. in the freezing cold but in uh, June. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you never know. There's, there's room for manoeuvre. He, yeah. has, he has some scope. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, is, this isn't definite at cool. all. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's all speculative at this point, but Lovely. he could right. be on his way. More nicer news. This is one that fills me with hope, actually. Yeah. Higuain. Gonzalo Higuain, yeah. I mean, he, this he, guy is class. Yeah, this he, guy he is, is sheer class. class. He is class. He is class. He hasn't had the best end of the season for Napoli, but as we yeah, all know. Yeah, we know who's at fault yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Don't we, fat boy? Why do you keep calling me that? <laughs> um, no, obviously Benitez um, is, is going to be the new Real Madrid boss. He actually took Napoli out of the Champions League places. Higuain's a Champions yeah, League no player. No surprises there. Um, Chelsea, as we pretty much say every week, are going to be looking to buy one, if not two strikers. I think we'd be mad not to consider Higuain, and that is a player that Jose Mourinho is a big fan of. I'm a big fan of. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. I honestly think he's sheer class. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you can imagine it's, it's going to be such a, especially if Remy stays as well, what, what, what three strikers to choose Electric. from. Yeah. Um, Back like the old days. Well, exactly, exactly. Like the old days. Um, have, you, have you seen the footage of Napoli fans shouting Higuain's name after a goal? <laughs> It's, something, it's, it's magnificent. You, you know how I'm a big fan of football fans being as partisan and passionate and vocal and loud as possible. Just seeing that, the Matthew Arden. Just, yeah. That 
clip. I just just Google it. It's, it's Napoli fans chanting Higuain's name after a goal. Yeah. It's it's magnificent. Well, no, Any, really, anybody who has any passion in football could just watch that. It's superb. Honestly, you have a Google of it. It's brilliant. Well, watch it and see if we can get it going in the shed. Yeah, yeah. It. Leave it with me. Yeah, yeah. Leave it with me. Um, yeah. He, I mean, he, he he's he's a great player, and uh, we're going to be battling the likes of Atletico Madrid and um, Manchester United for his signature, as well as I'm hearing a centre half. Yes. All the Toby. <laughs> Toby Alderweireld. Yeah, I mean he's been on loan at Southampton from at, from Atletico this season. Oh, he's had a good year. He had he had a very very good year. Now, Chelsea obviously want a defender as we talked about before. The main snagging point with this, I, I think Mourinho would love him. Obviously, Atletico is a club we've got a great relationship mm. with. I think Philip Luis is going to be going back there, so maybe that might be a bargaining Sweetener. chip. But uh, Alderweireld wants to play first team football every week. He's done that at Southampton, he's probably not going to do that at Chelsea, so that might be the snagging point there. My issue with this, if we're going to bring in a player at centre-half, say for example Raphael Varane, yes. I'm all for that because I think that he is world class. Yeah. If I mean, we're not going to bring in Raphael Varane, yeah. then I think Gary Cahill is a yeah, perfect... But, I mean, and see, I think that's the thinking now. I don't think they'll get Varane. I was, I was pretty sure they wouldn't get Varane. That move looked a lot closer in January. It wouldn't surprise you. Benitez ago. will go in there and decide he's yeah. not very good or something. Yeah, he, yeah. Can't play, he can't play more than one yeah. game a week. Or yeah, 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 yeah. We all know how that ends up. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think we're looking for a kind of maybe a third or fourth choice uh, defender right. rather than like a, a Varane or World Cup. Toby could fit the bill? I mean, Mourinho would love it. Uh, Chelsea would love it. it. It's whether he wants to play second fiddle, which right. uh, remains to be seen. Thank you very much, Ollie. No worries, all very, very interesting stuff. Guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and please comment below. Let us know uh, what you think and make sure that you uh, subscribe if you haven't done it already. And we just do one more thing just so that we can gauge because we're going to be doing a few, quite a few of these over the summer transfer related stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, will you do us a favour and give it a thumbs up? Thank you very much. Cheers for watching. Can you, please?